Bonjour, Let's Play viewers! Kefka Floyd here, ready to bring you the next episode of Let's Play Return to Castle Wolfenstein, in which we infiltrate the Special Weapons Facility. Let's watch. Major, why are we not yet ready to depart? My apologies, Herr Oberfuhrer, but the weapons loadout on the new torpedoes is uh, taking more time than originally anticipated. I don't have time for this nonsense. I have important business to attend to. This boat leaves for the X-Labs within the hour, torpedoes or not. Is that understood, Major? Perfectly, Herr Oberfuhrer. The X-Labs? Wonder where they could be going for that. What nefarious deeds could Death's Head be planning for at the X-Labs? I guess somebody here will be able to tell us where they are. We'll just have to make our way through after this seemingly unnecessary elevator ride. Taking its time. Ah, uh, wonderful. I see you finally fixed the elevator. Yes, yeah, so now it's time for me to fix you. All right. So, oh, that door is opening there. Now, the special weapons facility is not a stealth mission, but I do feel like playing a light touch with it because we're going to have some very dangerous, nasty things coming up. So in this very first room, we have a secret. The secret is this door right there. You can't open it. So you have to find an alternate way in. How do you get in? By exploding those gas tanks. Gets you some bullets, some armor, a Panzerfaust. Panzer, Panzerfaust. Oh, I don't know. I'll just say Panzerfaust because that's what I'm used to saying. Anyway. Just taking care of some raggedy Nazis here. We don't really have much to do in this part. It's actually uh, kind of quiet for something known as the Special Weapons Facility. Seems rather gray and dull, as most levels have been lately. Not much color to go around in this game, which kind of disappoints me a little bit. The forest level was really the only thing we got to see in terms of color. Everything else has just been either gray or brown. One engineer down, two engineers down. Oh, that doesn't look very pleasant underneath us. The water looks very toxic. I'd stay away from it. Alright. Engineer out of the way. This part we're coming into like the central hub of the special, or the secret weapons facility I should say. This hub area connects about three or four other areas including Death's Head's U-boat uh, pen. Which is our area we have to get to to clear the level. Wilhelm Strasse is Death's Head, as we may have been hearing about earlier in this Let's Play. This is the first time we've actually got to see him in the flesh, though. Death's Head will be making himself known throughout the next, oh, three or four episodes, where we'll be dealing directly with his evil machinations. Death's Head reports directly underneath Heinrich Himmler, basically giving him weapons and toys to play with. But we think those weapons and toys might have some kind of deeper meaning. We're not 100% sure yet, which is why hopefully we'll find out some more. There's a silenced Luger there if you want it. I don't need it because we already have a silencer, so not important. That door was just the locked door from earlier. There's a lot of locked doors in this level. We'll have to deal with that as time goes on, but every door can be unlocked simply by opening it from the other side. And that noise doesn't sound good. I hear something... It sounds like electricity. There's something walking around. Look at what it could be. Ugh! He's got no legs! Or, more accurately, he uses his arms for legs. Not quite sure. That sounds... Oh, shit! This is not good. Those guys are lopers. Lopers are bad mothers. You want to stay as far away from them as possible because they can move very fast and their electric attack can reach across distances. They are not pleasant. You should try to kill them as fast as possible, preferably with explosives or maybe a flamethrower. This guy down here can zap you through the floor. Not kind of sure how that works. Must arc through the air or something like that. So trying to kill him from up here is a little difficult. If you go downstairs, he will follow you. My advice is to try to kill lopers with the flamethrower. 
The flamethrower actually works very well on undead creatures. Though the loper is not undead, he sure has a lot of flesh, no armor. Very easy to burn him to death, if he would just move over here. As you can see, the lopers give off a distinct blue glow. Their electric butts are accounted for that. I'm not sure why the Nazis decided to give the lopers an electric butt. But we'll have to deal with it, I guess. We just picked up my favorite gun in the game, the Venom. Venom is very mean, has a very big chain gun, shoots a lot of bullets. But we're not going to use it right now because, in my opinion, the Venom is kind of tough to use against these guys because they move very fast and the stream of bullets is kind of tough to use against them. So let's see, can we get him? No, we're just going to use the flamethrower, I think. Yeah. Burn! Need to burninate these guys. All right, running away is the order of the day here. This lo particular loper is dumb enough not to follow you up the stairs. So you just have to kind of play a little bit of cat and mouse to get him. The loper always makes a distinct noise whenever you hear them coming. It sounds kind of like just something scraping against the tile floor. It's not footsteps, so you'll always know when one's around. They always do this kind of flipping animation to fall on their backs when they die. I think it sounds funny. Now, why would I willingly release a loper from its cage, you ask? Well, as it turns out, there's a secret behind there. And since he didn't see us, we can just feel free to spout our flame in there and burn him. The force of napalm compels you to die. Now, this loper is smart enough to follow you here, but the lasting effects of the flamethrower kill him pretty quickly. Now, uh, if you're wondering why, don't just open that door to get the goodies. It's because you can't. You have to break that little crack in the wall. Then you come in here and get more stuff. Sweet. Just get some ammo, health, you know, anything to help save you after dealing with those lopers. So let's give this bad boy a try. The venom is not very nice. At least for those on the receiving end. As you can see right here, let's give it a test on this guy. Insta-jib. Oh, yeah. I just love that. Now, what you can do with the Venom is that it does have a spin-up time. And when it spins up, uh, you have to basically just wait and see. You have to kind of learn how long it takes. I'd say it's probably like half a second, something like that. But you can... A good Venom user will have a way to keep it spooling constantly. If you are good at modulating your mouse clicks, you can essentially just keep the the weapon spinning forever. Let's see. We have a secret to get around here. Where can we get to it? Let's see. I think we have to do the old jumping on top of the... Yes, jumping on top of the box again. Because this just takes us back. What's in here? There's nothing in there. As for the lopers, we've killed all the lopers there are in the level, so we won't have to worry about those guys anymore. We just have regular old Nazis, Black Guard, etc. There we go. That was keeping us from progressing earlier. So now we can just head on through this door. Now, if you see here, this has a fence blocking the way. You have to find the switch to move the fence so you can get to a secret. Fortunately, that switch will be coming up soon enough. Let's see... I hear a guy. Where is he? Stole a fence there, can't do that. There he is. Fortunately, you can shoot through those. Now, these Nazis are coming by to see what exactly happened to his butt to their buddy, since he just fell down dead. Not sure if they've spotted me yet. Well, I guess we'll just have to go down and kill them. Now, you may notice that this map is, in fact, the single-player version of MP Sub. MP Sub is one of the more, I'd say, infamous maps from RTCW multiplayer, in that it can be one of the shortest maps you could ever play. A very good team is successful in planning the dynamite to finish the map in probably one and a half minutes. That's wicked fast. On the other hand, the matches can drag out forever. There's several choke points where a good armored team, consisting of venoms and flamethrowers and such, can effectively prohibit the opposing force from coming in and planting the dynamite on the sub. It's pretty hard. 
can also it can be kind of a meat grinder, but on the other hand, it can be pretty fun. And I still hear a couple engineers in here, but they're playing hard to get. Hiding behind these columns. Alright. Got some more ammo. Helmet. See, you don't want to go in that. Actually, do we want to go in this water? I can't remember. I know the secret's around here somewhere. And it's right. You can see there's a ladder right there. There's a little grating that's right here. You can kick it or shoot it, whatever you want to do. Throw a grenade. Grenades do work underwater. So now we climb up here, if we can somehow make it onto the ladder. That button unleashes, unlocks the door that lets us go into the next secret. It also moves these gratings so you can get out of here. Up here is the door to where we'll find another door which is covering a valve. This valve will fill that area under there full of water which will let us swim up into the secret. Oh yeah. You don't want to jump from there because it'll probably take some fall damage and that would be pretty dumb. Let's see, you don't want to go down there, but you can go over here. This will let us get out. Alright. Once we get the secret, we'll go find Death's Head and take care of his U-boat. See, we can just jump in here. Not a problem. Although, it's probably pretty polluted water. I wouldn't recommend swimming in it for any length of time. One thing is that, yes, BJ does make that <gasps> sound every time you come out of water. It does get a little annoying. Alright, now that we've gotten that secret taken care of, it's time to go find the U-boat pen. It's gotta be through this door, I think. And it is. There's the submarine. It's leaving. We're too late. Like we're gonna have to find a way to figure out where the submarine was going so we can follow Death's Head. Uh, this is not working. This tactical scope at this range is just not effective enough. I think we're gonna have to just run in and kill them all. Oh, he's over there. There is a red barrel over there you could use. Okay, let's take the Venom. We haven't used it much, but we're going to be using it a lot. Because the enemies are going to start getting much more powerful, you're going to need the basic firepower of the Venom to kill them all. Alright, up here. Oh man, I love the Insta-Jib. Just give it a little swing, and kablamo! I never get tired of that. You can see you can you can't sprint when you have this gun. This, like the flamethrower, and I want to say the Panzerfaust. Yes, the Panzerfaust. Do not let you sprint when you're using them. Can't go in the store. It's locked, so we have to find another way in. Fortunately, we already found that way in by blowing up that gas canister. Now, one thing that's nice about it, though, is that you still have a decent amount of spread and so you can still rain some bullets and run and gun at the same time. You couldn't really do that with, say, the mobile MG42 in uh, E.T. You can see why, in my opinion, that gun is far more fun. You can just run, gun, be a mean, death-killing machine. That's what I like. Anyway, we're at the end of the level now. I will not diverge any information to you. Oh, yeah? They're going to Norway! The coordinates are 67 degrees north by 16 degrees east! Very well. The X-Labs are in Norway. Tune in next time in Let's Play Return to Castle Wolfenstein, when we have to go to Norway, find the X-Labs, and take care of Death's Head. See you later!